today's video, I'm going to go into a lot of detail. I'm going to talk about everything you need to know to be able to find the right fragrance for you. Then I'm going to talk about all the different vendors online and offline that you can look at to purchase and buy fragrances. And then I'm going to talk about things that you need to be careful of, things that you want to watch out for like counterfeit fragrances or websites that, yeah, you know, you never know what you're going to get on them. So that being said, the first piece of advice I can give you is the more you learn about fragrance, the less likely you're going to be taken advantage of, the less likely you're going to overspend the less likely you're going to buy something that you don't like and be stuck with it. Now, you may fall into the trap like I did once you love this hobby and all of a sudden you start buying more fragrances than you could ever smell in a lifetime. But you know that that's the risk. Point being is when you learn more about something, you're more likely to make a smart decision. Now, for me, it started just simply getting into the books. You can pick some of these up. This old book here by National Geographic picked up for a few bucks. Or maybe you want to go on Luca. Him and uh, Tanya Sanchez did this great book. Love it right here. That one had some great nuggets in it. This one right here, absolutely love it. Beautiful book. Um, Neil Chapman, his perfume. Now, a lot of this information you can pick up online. Fragrantica, I pretty much hit that website every day. Or maybe find a YouTuber that all he talks about is fragrance. You can go over and check out Jeremy over at Jeremy Fragrance, Stephen over at Red Lessons, Ash over at Gent Sense. Guys, find the guy that resonates with you and simply learn from them. Now, really quick, gents, I want to let you know today's video is brought to you by Shop Tagger. It's completely free. Make sure that you use Shop Tagger to save money. Black Friday, guys, you want to install, this is going to be your secret weapon to make sure that you never overpay. Gents, getting started is easy. Let me show you. The first thing you want to do is go download the free app to your phone or computer. Next, start to shop online. So, all these fragrances, hundreds of them, I have used Shop Tagger to help save me money every time I'm looking online. Because here's the reality. When I'm looking at all these different stores, I find a fragrance I like here, a fragrance I like there, a fragrance I like here. Guess what? Shop Tagger allows me to put it into one wish list. And then when I'm going to check out, they scan the internet for the best deals out there. One of these stores I'm going to talk about, they've got this, yeah, code that's 25%. Sounds great, right? 25% off. Well, I go in and I use Shop Tagger and I find a 35% off coupon code. Gents, this goes way beyond fragrances. Shop Tagger can be used at over 5,000 stores. So, if you're over on Amazon, you're at Nordstrom's, you're grabbing some boots over at Thursday Boots, you're going to be able to save using Shop Tagger. Another thing I love about Shop Tagger, the notifications. Let's say you see a great looking jacket, you want it. Oh, they don't have it in stock. They don't have it in my size. They don't have it in my color. Well, guess what? You can set up the notifications so as soon as it's back in stock, you can be the first guy notified. In addition, you can also say, you know what? I don't want to buy that unless it has a certain percentage, it has a certain size discount on it. Guess what? You can get that notification as well. Really, gents, this is a no-brainer. All your shopping from across the web organized in one place, you get notified when things are back in stock, they have a cash back feature, and it synchronizes across all your devices. And by the way, they're always making improvements. They're always updating the app. So, if you haven't checked it out, you haven't downloaded it for a while, go check out Shop Tagger. Again, down in the description. An awesome company. I'm proud to support them because, guys, it really is a no-brainer. Saves you money. So, first up, let's talk about Eau Fresh. This is going to be the most diluted form of fragrance out there. And why does it even exist? Because sometimes people want something that's only going to last an hour. They want something that's very light, just going to give a hint of a fragrance. And that's what purpose this serves. Now, in general, you're going to see a concentration of about 1 to 3 percent of the perfume oil to the alcohol or water content. So, you can see why an Eau Fresh is just simply going to last, yeah, maybe an hour at most. Next up on the list, we've got colognes. Colognes are going to be stronger than Eau Fresh at 2 to 5 percent concentration, usually last a couple hours. And for most North American men, this is in their mind what men wear. Men wear colognes, women wear perfumes. Not exactly, but I see the point because a lot of stuff that was marketed early on was called a cologne. And for a lot of guys, this is what they think of when it's a man's fragrance. But it's an old ancient word, one of the oldest words for fragrances. And actually, really, it has nothing to do with man or woman. It just simply has to do with the concentration. Liar! Sorry to burst your bubble. Next up, we've got Eau de Toilette. And I know I've mispronounced this multiple times in multiple videos. Point is concentration. Five, to 15 percent. And for most men, this is where fragrances are going to be at nowadays because the manufacturers understand that people want something that's going to last more than a few hours and that is an ET for most time, three to four hours, although it depends on the type of fragrance it is. But this right here is just simply, again, the concentration, 
5 to 15%, so about 85% alcohol. Still, this is a fragrance that can last five to six hours depending on the notes and what's inside the oil. Next up, we've got EDPs, Eau de Parfums, and Parfums. In general, EDPs, what are we going to see that at? 15 to 20, maybe sometimes 25%, but past 20, 25%, that's going to be parfum territory. Point being is that stuff is strong and that's where we're going to see the concentration of the oil, 30%, 35%, that stuff is going to last all day. That is beast mode, again, depending on the notes they go with, but in general, you're also going to see these cost more. Why? Because when you're using more of that essential of those oils, it's usually the more it costs. So, that is one of the reasons that you'll see EDPs and perfumes costing more than EDTs or Eau Fraiches. A few other terms I think it's important for you to know is the difference between sillage, projection, and longevity. A lot of times people throw them together. They actually have slightly different meanings. So, sillage, this is going to be how long your fragrance lingers. So, if you're walking by, if you're in a room, this is going to be something basically leaving a scent trail. For some people, uh, you don't want to have so much that you're going to choke people out, but I get it. You're in a club. You want to be remembered. So, you're going to find a fragrance that's maybe warmer is going to have a really nice sillage. Now, projection is very similar and this is how strongly the fragrance is radiating from you. Basically, how much of it is going out into the room. Again, important to people that really want to project their fragrance and also important to people that want a fragrance that doesn't have much projection. Let's say you're going for a nice clean office scent and something that, yeah, you just don't want to, again, choke out the room. Now, when it comes to longevity, this one is tricky because one fragrance on you may not last very long, but on another person, it may last twice as long. Why is that? Because your body chemistry, how warm you know your skin is, all of these things where you apply the fragrance, all of this goes into longevity. I will say that you know there are some general guidelines and when you read how long a fragrance is going to last, somebody says, oh, it's going to last eight hours on you. Well, take it with a grain of salt because on your skin type, it may only last six hours. It may actually last two days on your skin. So, this is where you've actually got to wear the fragrance. You've got to test it to find out what the real longevity is. In general though, cleaner, lighter fragrances, those that maybe have citrus as a dominant note, these are going to last maybe a few hours. Those fragrances though that are heavier, maybe have vanilla, have cinnamon, have maybe some spices in them. These are going to end up lasting a lot longer, sometimes all day. We're talking eight to 12 hours and beyond. So, how to test a fragrance? Well, the best thing that you can do is walk into a box store that actually has the fragrance and test it out. Stop this madness in the name of your if you're traveling, one thing I like to do is stop by Duty Freeze. They usually have a wide option of designer fragrances that you can test out. But what if you want something niche or what if, hey, we're in a world in which it's just more difficult to do things in person? I know some companies will actually send you a sample if you ask them. Other times, they'll charge you a small fee, you know, maybe five bucks, ten bucks for a small two mil sample. Now, two mil is pretty small. I mean, you're going to get maybe one to two wearings out of that, uh, but it's enough. Or maybe you can get five mil, eight mil. You'll find that that actually is enough for definitely, you know, quite a few wears depending on the strength of the fragrance, how many times you apply it. Uh, eight mil, I think you can get like 140 sprays out of that. That you can even argue is good enough for a month. This one is a full ounce. So, a full ounce, this could last you uh, probably three to four months if you wore it every day. So, you know, you don't need a big sample. What I would say though is it's always best to test out the fragrance because, you know, it's better to get something like this that maybe you pay, yeah, 10, 15, 20 bucks for than go out there and spend $100 on that same fragrance and find out you don't like it. That being said, I blind bought 95% of my fragrances. So, yeah, a few hundred fragrances I bought without ever smelling. How did I do that? Why did I do it? Well, to be honest, 90 something percent of them, I am very happy with. It's very rare that I would get a fragrance that I would not like. Yes, some of them maybe I'm not crazy about, but I'd say a lot of these I really was happy with. How did I do that? Because I understood what notes I liked and I was honest with myself about that. And then I looked to branch out into fragrances that shared a lot of those notes. A lot of that same, they have the same profile. Many websites out there, I'll link to them down in the description, they go into detail about each of the fragrances out there from Fragrantica to Base Notes. But what I love about these sites is you can see, hey, it's similar to this. If you like this, you're going to like that. If you like oceanic notes, you know, I knew when I grabbed, uh, you know, Aqua Di Gio right here. This one right here, I knew I would like its flankers. Even though its flankers are very different, I understood 
how different they were. And all of a sudden I started picking up a new, I'd love Profundo. It's like special blend. You know, you start getting into this stuff and you realize that you can stay within that family and you appreciate what they're bringing to the table. Now let's talk about flankers. So a flanker, if you can imagine, this is a fragrance that has done really well. One of Paco Rabanne's top selling fragrances. People love this sweet fragrance and they buy it again and again. The bottle and the marketing probably helped with that. But they're like, you know what? We should make something similar. Some kind of like a brother that's going to have a lot of the same genetic material. So they came out with this one right here. This is probably in my top, I don't know, 70, 80 fragrances. I'd put it up there. This one right here is in my top five why? It gets compliments. I love it. This one right here got a little bit of tobacco note to it. Point being, it's very similar to the DNA to this one right here with the sweetness, but it's its own fragrance. That being said, do your research on flankers. This one here, an amazing flanker of the original, just a bit stronger, exactly what we would expect of an extreme. That vanilla, I mean, this stuff is good enough that you can eat it. This one right here, if you think that you're getting anything close to the original Spice Bomb, you are going to be upset. Now, a little bit earlier, we talked about EDTs versus versus EDPs versus perfumes when it comes to concentration. Does that mean you always want to go for the highest concentration? Is it always going to last the longest? Is it always going to be the most intense version? No. You know, in general, you would think it would work that way, but honestly, these fragrance houses do whatever they want. And so anyone that's out there, you know, they saw the EDP come out of the EDT. You know, people loved this right here. This was a bestseller, continues to be one of the top fragrances out there. But the EDP, when people smell this, they're like, you know what? It is maybe a little bit stronger, but it's smoother. It has some different notes to it. It's softer. It doesn't, you know, it's, there's something about this one that's different. Now, not everyone can smell this. Unless you have a trained nose and you really get to know fragrances, if for the average guy, they're not going to really pick it up. So, in my opinion, I would go for the fragrance that's doing well. You know, the great thing about crowd pleasers is, yes, you're going to smell like a lot of other people, but there's a reason that people keep buying it. It's probably pretty popular. That being said, if you got a few extra bucks to spend, you want to go with something a little bit different, a little bit more sophisticated, yeah, go with the EDP. But what about the perfume? Is this going to be stronger than the EDP? You would think so. Not necessarily. This is another example of, well, it's not, it's just a little bit smoother. And, uh, you know, is it so much stronger? I, I would argue it's not. Another example of this and one that upset a lot of people was Blue de Chanel. So when the fragrance came out, I think it was like in 2010, an amazing groundbreaking fragrance. People absolutely love it. I think it is a masterpiece. But when the EDP came out, you know, a little bit stronger, a little bit smoother. People like, you know, this is nice. Not much of a difference between the two. This one's a little bit more expensive for the juice. But uh, yeah, I could end up owning both. And then all of a sudden the perfume came out and everyone's like, you know what? It's not even stronger than the EDP. Smells about the same. Maybe there's a slight difference, but why in the world would I go out and buy that? Me, do I notice a difference? Not really. That being said, you know, it, it's up to you. And that's the beauty of this. Once you get into it, you can smell all of them and you can find the one that works for you. Now, speaking of smell, how should you test a fragrance to find out if it's right for you? A lot of times you're going to walk into a store and they're going to say, okay, spray it on a piece of paper and you can smell it that way. That will give you a quick view of the top notes, but even that's going to ring hollow. Why? Because these fragrances are made to be sprayed on the human body. And the heat, the chemicals on there, it's going to be different for each person. I know I hate to complicate it, but that's the reality. That being said, spraying it on your person and wearing it all day, you also get to experience the top notes, the middle notes, and the base notes. And that's going to be different for each fragrance. Some fragrances are linear, meaning that it's the same throughout the life of the fragrance. For eight hours, it's going to smell just like it smelled initially, maybe a little bit weaker at the end. But for a lot of fragrances, especially the ones that are the top ones out there that are regarded by the fragrance community and just, you know, people in general, they're the ones that have a little bit of a life cycle. If you can imagine those top notes, maybe there's going to be a bergamot in there, something as citrusy like that. And then all of a sudden, in that center, we're going to get a little bit of wood. We're going to get something that's a little bit meatier, a little bit heavier. And then down at that base, we're going to have the ambergris, or we're going to have maybe a sandalwood, or we're going to have just some notes in there that that help give that fragrance body. And if you, when you experience this, this is one of the most beautiful things about fragrances. Once you get into this, is you understand that there are so many. It's like a concert, and you're a part of this. Yes, putting it on your body, and that's what I want to stress. So yes, you can get a whiff of it on a piece of paper when you open up a magazine. That gives you, but it's a hollow ring. It's not the same as actually wearing it and testing it. So you know, if you can get a sample, that's always the best option. And to wear it multiple times 
or to uh, just, in my opinion, blind buy the fragrance, knowing that, hey, I'm going to get maybe a smaller bottle. I'm going to go with something that I know again and again people have told me is amazing and I trust their judgment. That way you can wear it and really just really experience the fragrance. Now, what about different bottled sizes? So I'm going to say 30 mil, one ounce is about where it starts. This isn't the most common size because it's really not seen as enough to draw people in to pay a premium price. I would say it really starts at 50 mil. So this right here, you know, it's a relatively small bottle. They make it look a little bit bigger and longer and it's a great deal, you know, a good fragrance right here. Other times you're gonna see companies come in at this size right here, but 50 mil for me is about where it starts. Now past 50 mil or 1.7 ounces, you are gonna see some sizes in between there. One common size is about 75 mil. So with Aquadigia, their special blend or right here, we've got the absolute instinct, both of these coming in at 75 mil. You've also got some interesting sizes. I think this one right here is at 90 mil, so just, just over three ounces in size. Uh, but right here, all of a sudden, Aquadigio, the classic, 100 mil, and this is going to be the most standard size. So this right here, 100 mil by Prada, and we've also got this 100 mil Sauvage. What's interesting is if you were looking at these bottles side by side, I would swear this one has more juice in it, but uh, they both are saying 100 mil. Past 100 mil, um, you're going to see some odd sizes again. 125 here from Profundo. Uh, we're also going to see, you know, right here, this aqua, this code here. This is 100 mil, but 200 right here. This Dior, even though it's yes, I guess you know girth has a lot to do with size. Oh my God! Point being. 200 mil in this one. So you want to make sure that how much juice you're getting. Sometimes you think you're going to get a great deal and you realize, hey, they're only going to send me a 50 mil bottle versus this other one. I could get 200 mil, especially if you know and you like the fragrance. You will oftentimes save money buying a bigger fragrance. But understand, 200 mil, you know how many sprays that is? That's like 2,800 sprays. That's This is enough for three years of solid use. Maybe if you're a heavy user and you love the Ambrox and Bomb here, maybe you'll be able to get through this in a year. Point being is don't necessarily buy the big bottle, think you're going to save money because, you know, the question is, are you actually going to use the fragrance before it goes bad? So really quick, let's talk about how fragrances get damaged. Heat, cold can damage a fragrance, but the most common culprit is going to be exposure to sunlight. Exposure to light, having them in a room where every single day you've got light going through there. Because here's what happens. Light goes through and it's causing the molecules to, to, to basically, it's putting energy into the molecules and it can cause them to break down, to separate. It can have a very negative effect on a fragrance in a short amount of time. So, store them in a dark place, maybe keep the box, keep them there. I know here in my office, turn the lights off most of the time so I don't have sunlight directly hitting the fragrance. You probably don't want to keep it in the shower, although if you go through the fragrance in a period of a year or two, you probably don't have too much to worry about. And you do hear stories of how people find an old fragrance that their father wore and it hasn't been opened up for 20, 30 years and it's amazing. That That's possible, but understand that there in general is a shelf life, but if you use the fragrance regularly, don't have to worry about it too much. Once you start to get 20 to 30 fragrances though, you may want to be careful because you want something that's going to be around in five years. Now, you may wonder why am I holding this fragrance? So, Sean John's Unforgivable. This one, a lot of people feel that this fragrance was ruined by a reformulation. And I'm bringing this up because some of you guys may have bought a smaller bottle and you're like thinking, hey, I'm going to go buy the big 200 mil bottle because, you know, I've went through, it took me 10 years, but I got through the thing. Be careful because a lot of these fragrances are reformulated. Basically, they make a set amount in a batch and it's kind of like any type of, you know, when they use alcohol and different chemicals is yes, you know what should go in there, but sometimes it doesn't mix the same way and these can come out differently. Other times, companies are doing a money grab and so they try to save a lot of money and they put out which is a, a much diluted version and that's what people complain about all the time. So, if you really like a fragrance and uh, yeah, it's just understand that you may not be able to get the same one again 10 years later. So, at this point, if you're interested in learning more about notes or maybe the different types of fragrances like oriental, floral, citrus, wood, or maybe you're curious about, okay, what can I wear to the office? What's going to be a good fragrance that I should pick up if I'm going to be going out on a date or maybe just a casual weekend? I want to remind you, I've got a support article down in the description of today's video in which I go into a lot more detail. And in that support article, I'm going to cover everything I covered in today's video just in more detail. So, if you simply, hey, I'm tired of watching this video, I want to read all this in more detail, make sure to go check it out. It's a great article. I will link to it down in the description. So now let's get into the meat of buying fragrances and how to save money, how to make sure you don't overpay. 
in general, the best deals are going to be online, but the worst return policies are also going to be online. When you go into a box store or you go into, you know, you're going to get the best customer service when you buy directly from a niche perfumer. Why? Because you're going to meet the possibly the perfumer, the guy that actually is putting this whole company together. So you can bet in general, they're going to bend over backwards to make sure that you're happy, get you samples. If you don't like the fragrance, maybe they'll allow you to trade something in versus when you go to one of those discounters online, they pretty much have a no return policy. It may be if you haven't opened it, you know, you haven't sampled it they're going to want to make sure that they get that package just like they sent it. And it's still at their discretion. They could decide not to basically issue you a refund. So be aware of that. And this really comes down to risk versus reward. If you want to take higher risk buying online because you want the higher reward of saving money, well, go for it. And you just got to understand that's the path you're choosing versus going into a shop, going in and, you know, maybe, you know, with a large beauty shop or a box store, they're going to have some of the most just easiest return policies. You buy something at Walmart, you buy something at Sam's or at Costco, most likely they're going to have a pretty simple return policy. So the first way to buy your fragrances is directly from the manufacturer. The advantage here, you know exactly what you're getting it. When you go and you buy a Chanel fragrance on Chanel's website, you know this is not going to be a counterfeit, that I'm getting the real deal. I'm getting the best of the best. This juice is going to be solid. Yes, they may have reformulated it, but at the end of the day, this is as close to yeah perfection as you can get when it comes to fragrances. Another great thing for the manufacturer is that they maintain the relationship with the consumer. And that's why a lot of companies decide to do this because they realize, hey, if they've got your address, they've got your phone number, they've got your information, they can market directly to you. They can engage with you and they realize that's incredibly valuable. Why don't more companies do that? Because you need to be really strong as a company. You need to have cash reserves. You need to have, in a sense, created that brand that people want it enough that they're going to come after you. Now, there are some companies that are doing this but uh, they're not necessarily as strong of a brand. And that's going to be a lot of YouTubers out there. Why are they selling their fragrances directly to you and not putting them out there in the box stores? Because it's a distribution issue. They don't have the reach. They don't, you know, most distributors, they want you to make a certain number of sales. And, you know, they're not going to put these things on the shelf because they, they know the vast majority of people out there who don't watch YouTube don't know who put out these fragrances, Stephen and Jeremy, by the way. But, uh, you know, that, in my opinion, is the beauty of what these YouTubers are creating is this relationship directly to the consumer. And so you can come in and buy fragrances directly from them. And I think it's actually really good because you know that you're getting the real deal. In addition, there isn't really a middleman. They're able to keep the profit. They're able to keep a lot more money in their pockets, which then they can use to hire teams, to grow the brand and to build up, you know, their little empire. Another great option for buying fragrances, especially if you want something nobody else is wearing, you want a niche fragrance, check out boutiques. Boutiques are going to be smaller stores that specialize in helping these smaller brands distribute themselves. So they're going to bring a whole bunch of them together. They're going to create an online presence or they're going to have a physical store where you can go in and actually smell things. So the House of Creed started off in boutiques. Now they've got their own stores uh, and you can buy, of course, from their website. But point being is initially these higher end, more expensive brands that they realized, okay, people want to smell these things before they're going out and they're spending the money. You'll also see even some smaller YouTubers getting their products into different boutiques out there in the big cities. Uh, but yeah, you know, I I think they're still great because sometimes you want to smell a fragrance that yes, coming from, you know, Creed and you have no idea what it's going to go like. Yes, you could travel to New York and try to go to the Creed store or you can maybe go into a boutique and there's a good chance that they would have the niche fragrance. And I really like supporting small businesses. So if you can go into a boutique or you can find one online, highly recommend you check them out because these are some of the best places to buy. The people are very knowledgeable. You could even sometimes call them up on the phone, send them emails and they'll get back to you with actually very informed responses. Next up, we've got box stores and I'm including everything from duty free to Walmart to Costco to going up to Nordstrom or even Barney's. Point being, these retailers have multiple outlets. They also have huge supply chains. They get a lot of these fragrances. And because of that, they got to liquidate this stuff sometimes. So there are some amazing deals that can be found out there. In general, they've got really tight supply chains. So you're not really going to have counterfeits out there. And if you know what you're looking for, you can find some amazing deals. And over at Walmart or Sam's Club, I'm able to find both of these fragrances for a fair price. Combine that maybe with a discount. Maybe there's a special offer. Maybe you have a gift certificate 
certificate that you haven't used. All of a sudden, you're able to get these for pennies on the dollar. And don't think it's just inexpensive fragrances. I've been over to the Walmart website, saw the House of Homage being carried over there, and they were discounted heavily. I've also gone over to other websites like Costco, and all of a sudden, you see Creed being sold at a discount. Now, what if you want to find a fragrance that's a little bit newer or a fragrance that's a little bit more exclusive? How are you going to get these at a discount? Where well, there are ways, but you're going to have to look probably the higher end box stores. So, Ulta Beauty is a pretty good one. I also like to look at Neiman Marcus. And the tactic I would advise here is, okay, do you have a credit card with that company? That's always a great tactic. You know you're going to spend a lot of money with this company for a lot of gifts. Go ahead. You got good credit. Open up that credit card and you're going to get an instant discount. Doesn't always apply to fragrances, but sometimes it does. Another option here is, are they selling gift cards where you spend a hundred bucks and you actually get $125 or maybe $110 in gift cards? Maybe get on their email list. Find a way to get insider information about when they're going to have a deal, when they're going to have a sale. I remember with Ulta Beauty, they were having this deal where you walk into the store and they give you a card and basically it tells you inside how much money you could save on a purchase that day. And guess what? You could use it on anything. It was an in-store credit and uh, I was able to save 25 bucks. And guess what? I picked up a fragrance that day because I had been looking at one and it was right there and I was able to save $25 right off the fragrance. Next up, we've got the discount stores. In my area, we've got TJ Maxx. And when I go to TJ Maxx, what I see is they're trying to liquidate tons of clothing from different brands. In general, though, I think a lot of manufacturers do make for these lower end discounter stores. So, I wouldn't say that this was once being sold at like three to four times the price in another store. Sometimes that is the case, but a lot of times they're making it specialty for the store. When it comes to fragrances, I see the usual suspects in there again and again. Now, both these fragrances I think are great. And if you've never smelled them and they have a tester in that store and you like it, go for it. You can find these for, I know, well under 20 bucks here in the United States. But in general, I don't always find the best deals. I, again, I see the same thing again and again. And I think if you look online, you can sometimes find a better deal. Next up, we've got fragrance discounters. And I've bought from a lot of these. In my opinion, they're some of the best deals out there because you have so much selection and the prices are usually really good. So, my favorite online discounters are going to be Fragrance Net, Fragrance X, Max Aroma, Forever Lux, FragranceBuy.ca, and perfumeclick.com. So, having bought 200 plus fragrances from fragrance discounters, I have to say that I don't think I've received a single counterfeit that I know of. So, I feel pretty secure buying from them. That being said, they take a long time sometimes to ship to you. They don't have the best customer service. Um, you know, it is what it is. You're going to save money. You've got good selection, but you need to understand that you're not buying from a boutique. You're not buying directly from the manufacturer. Uh, their return policy is not that great. If you open it up, you are not going to be able to return it. They'll take the package, but they're not going to send you anything. That being said, if you're willing to put up with all that and you want the best deal out there on the web, then I would recommend checking out the fragrance discounters. And by the way, if you're going to use fragrance net or any of these ones, make sure to use Shop Tagger. I, I know they're the sponsor of today's video, but I use them again and again. I'll tell you a quick story. So, I'm over at Fragrance Net and they're excited. They're telling me I'm going to save 25%. Guess what? I use Shop Tagger. I find the discount for 35%. And I know there used to be a 37% discount coupon out there. It is now gone. Actually, I take that back. The 37% off coupon still can be found. So, thank you, Shop Tagger. But the 35% discount code, I know as of this video right now, is still out there. So look for it and don't fall for that 25%, 20%. Yes, uh, no, get the real thing. Now, a lot of you may have heard that the fragrances being sold at these discounters are gray market fragrances. Does that mean they're counterfeits? Does that mean it's illegal? No, it just means that it's a secondary market, that this has been resold a couple times. Example, so let's say Creed uh, sends a whole bunch of fragrances over to a store and that store can move a lot of the fragrances, but they can't move green Irish tweed. It's classic, great fragrance, but for some reason, people aren't buying it. What are they going to do? Because they want to send more fragrances and they want to send more green Irish tweed along with those new fragrances they're coming out with, I don't know, Aventus Cologne or Viking or something. And so, they want the new fragrances. Now, they got to get rid of this old stuff. What do they do? They actually sell it to an online seller, one of these discounters. They'll take the fragrance. They get it at the price that the retailer initially sold it to that first you know, vendor and that vendor just resells it. Maybe he doesn't, maybe he loses money on that. But the point is, he gets those off his books. He makes room for more fragrances coming in and you get the benefit because guess what? 
this guy out there has this fragrance that he got for half the price because he bought it, you know, at, at that, that lower price and he sells it to you with a smaller markup because he doesn't have this big expensive store. That's the gray market. We see it in cameras. We see it in lots of other items. We also see it in fragrances. To me, it's a great thing because it allows you to get the fragrances you want at a discount. Now, which one of these discounters has the best deal? Unfortunately, it's fluid and it changes. I will say that sometimes I'll find a better deal over at one, but I'll still buy from another discounter because they have a lot faster delivery. I simply like what I can see here. They've got the size I'm looking for. They've got the bottle type I'm looking for. So, all those things matter. Now, you're also going to see testers out there and I think that testers are perfectly fine. Now, with the tester, oftentimes you're not going to get the fancy lid. So, if it's a tester, it may be missing the lid. Uh, it will come in a very plain box. That may be a no, you know, hey, I want the original box. I want everything to look like it should because this thing's going to sit on my shelf. You know, they've got the magnetic cap there. Point being, if you're willing to deal with not getting a lid, with getting in a very plain box, you can oftentimes save 10, 20% on the discounted price as well if you're willing to accept a tester. Now, what about niche suppliers? Niche suppliers, however you pronounce that, you guys get the point. These, like the name implies, are going to have fragrances that are hard to find. Fragrances from small houses, from artisans. I've bought from Lucky Sense, very happy with their customer service, everything I went through with them. I liked it. They sent me tons of samples. That was really cool. But when you're looking for something that's going to be a little bit higher and a little bit probably more expensive, you can't really expect much of a discount. Although sometimes if you get on these guys' email list, which by the way, if you start to buy from somebody, get on their email list. Why? Because they're oftentimes send the best deal that way. And I like that I get these email updates. I know when they've got something, they've got limited runs of another thing and they'll let me know and I can go in there and grab it. Now, what about clone fragrances? Yes, in my opinion, they are perfectly fine as long as you're honest with yourself about what you're getting. This is not the real thing, but you know what? It smells just like the real thing. And if you own the real thing and you don't want to wear it every day because it's expensive, hundreds of dollars, and you want something you can wear every day that smells just like it, well, go for it. I think that's an, a great example. But don't try to fool yourself if you really want this and think you're going to be happy getting this. To me, when you save up the money and you spend and you actually get what you want, that's when actually you have the confidence and you feel, you, you just know on the inside. There's a whole study of science on this talking about confidence and when people buy, you know, counterfeits or they buy something that they know is not real, they never feel good about it because they know that somebody that's in the know would be able to detect it. Although, in my opinion, this one is just a little bit stronger and vast majority of guys I talk to can't even tell the difference. That being said, they're both great fragrances, but yeah, don't be afraid to buy a clone if uh, it's going to make you happy. So, what about Amazon? What about eBay? Okay, this fragrance right here, I did pick up on Amazon because this is how Lionel Richie said he was going to distribute it. And yes, I am a big Lionel Richie fan. Had to get the fragrance. It's a good one, by the way. I mean, it's nothing to write home about. Point being is this is how Lionel wanted to distribute his new fragrances. Very few companies decide to do it that way. They've got their own channels and Amazon is one of the last ones they're going to go on because they really don't have any control and there are so many counterfeits now on Amazon out there. So, if you're looking for a really hard, you know, a brand like Tom Ford, understand that a lot of the Tom Fords on Amazon, I know it sounds crazy, but they are fake. A lot of them over on eBay are fake as well. Why? Because this right here sells for hundreds of dollars and it's relatively easy to manufacture something for especially to somebody that doesn't know the difference that looks like this and just put in something that has a smell to it. That's why I don't recommend for the vast majority of people just starting off to buy any fragrances on Amazon or eBay. Now, eBay, you can, if you're smart, look around and you can look at their stars. You can say, okay, they're selling that bottle of Sauvage. It's 50% done. The guy actually has a good story. Hey, this was my father's. He passed away. I all I never liked the fragrance. You know, if you can pick it up, you know, I'll sell it to you. I don't know for forty dollars, fifty dollars. It's halfway used. He's got a good reputation on there. If you really want to take the risk, you're going to get a higher reward. Um, you know, by grabbing a fragrance like this at a discounted price. That being said, you've got to understand that there are many. You know. Un unscrupulous people on eBay who are going to sell counterfeits and they've got all fake stars in there. So, it is something, in my opinion, when you're just starting off with fragrances, be careful buying on eBay or Amazon. And what about the Facebook groups? You know what I'm talking about where you've got people in there buying and selling all these different fragrances. Somebody goes out there and buys a fragrance and says, you know what? I wore it a few times. I don't like it. I want to get rid of it. I'm willing to sell it for 90% the price. 
I paid for it. So I think these groups serve a purpose and there's a lot of people doing things in them, but I do find they're incredibly inefficient. So if your time's valuable, you may want to be careful. But if you love the idea of the hunt, of finding the right fragrance, or you're looking for something that's really niche, something that isn't made anymore, and that's actually where eBay is useful, uh, finding these really old fragrances that are, you know, but again, if you're watching, if you are after that, why are you even watching this video? This video is for the guy really starting off. And for that reason, I would recommend for most people, those buy and sell groups, eBay, Amazon, not the best place to buy your first set of fragrances. So what video to watch next? How about something we didn't cover in today's video, how to make your fragrance last longer. You go out there, you spend your hard earned money on a fragrance and it doesn't last but a couple hours. How to make it last all day, I cover it in this video guys, right here.